Sup YouTube, official gaming network, and welcome to episode 29 of our Mario Game and Java tutorial. Last episode, we implemented a launcher into our game. This episode, we're going to be implementing a one-up mushroom into our game, our live mushroom. So, if we get it, we'll get an extra life. First sort of mushroom. So, I'm uh, going to GIMP. As you can see, I created a little, uh, well, I didn't really create it. I copied uh, our normal mushroom. And I uh, just pasted it and just changed the color from red to green and I uh, just call that a sprite. But anyway, that's what the actual Mario games do anyway. Let me just change the microphone a bit. Yeah, that should be good. Uh, anyway, because I created the sprite, uh, we have to uh, make a sprite in our code. So while I create a sprite, I just want to tell you guys that this is our second... This is my second attempt of actually recording this episode because uh, I recorded uh, the first episode, but actually what happened is that I only recorded the audio and I didn't record the actual screen, so uh, hooray for me. Actually, I'm not very happy at all about that. I'm kind of annoyed, but yeah, anyway. Uh, so, just need to change the uh, name to Life Mushroom and... Uh, we can't actually uh, use numbers or uh, characters like uh, comments or, I mean, commas, no, not comments, commas or uh, full stops in our variable names because uh, that confuses uh, Java or Eclipse and uh, we get an error, as you can see. So uh, that applies with our class names as well. So we're just going to call 1UP Mushroom a uh, life mushroom just for the sake of this episode. So, uh, before we uh, really get into this episode, uh, there's some uh, code I was supposed to add in uh, last episode about the launcher, but I forgot, so we'll do it now. So, uh, there was a bug that uh, I was supposed to fix. What was happening is that I'll just run the game. Alright, uh, I'll just wait a few seconds. I'll start the game. But then I'm already inside the game, and that's because uh, our death screen time is counting, even though we're not actually playing the game. So let's say, so yeah, our death screen time will uh, keep counting when we're in our launcher, and uh, by the time we press start game, it could already be greater than 180. So to fix that, we simply just type uh, in this little if statement here. We simply just type and playing is equal to true then death screen time plus plus and then our death screen time is greater than or equal to 180 if statement I'm going to create another if statement if playing is equal to true then we're cop going to copy this code then we're going to type else if playing is equal to false need to make that a lowercase p and uh, just copy the first two lines of code uh, put it in here and then what we have to type is set playing equal to false actually no uh, if playing is equal to true should be if playing is equal to false actually oh my god I stuffed up so this should be if game over is equal to false and if game over is equal to true and if that's true we're going to set playing equal to false and game over equal to false as well. So now, anyway, we're going to go into our uh, mushroom class in our power up package inside of our entity package. And uh, we're going to add another parameter to our constructor and it's going to be an integer called type. So we're not actually going to create a separate class for our uh, life mushroom, our one up mushroom, however you want to call it. Uh, we're actually just going to use the same mushroom class for both the types of mushrooms because uh, it's a lot easier this way and it saves a lot of time. It's a lot more efficient as well. So uh, in the constructor, we're going to set this dot type equal to type. 
but uh, type isn't uh, a variable. So you might think we might have to type it in uh, the mushroom class, but no. Uh, we have to actually type it in our entity class, and uh, I'm actually going to create a getter for it as well. I keep saying actually way too much. So anyway, uh, we can't actually... Oh my god, I say it again. Uh, we can't uh, make a private int type in our uh, mushroom class because in our entity for loops that we make, uh, the objects we use are entities and not mushrooms. And because uh, it's only, and uh, the variable is only available in our uh, mushroom class and not our entity class, uh, we can't actually access our type if it was in our uh, mushroom class. So we need to uh, put it into our entity class. I hope that makes sense for you guys. Uh, I don't know what would happen if it didn't make sense. So public int uh, get type. And we need to return the type. So let me just explain that again in case you didn't get it. Uh, because, uh, I'll, let me just go into our player class to uh, make this a bit easier for me. Uh, as you can see in our entity for loops, then we create entity objects and not mushroom objects. Even if we make this public, um, because uh, our, we make entity objects in our entity for loops, uh, we can't, uh, this, this integer wouldn't be visible unless it's in our entity class. So we actually got to put it into our entity class. And we'll just leave our player class open because we'll need that for later. Anyway, so now we're going to go into our power up lock class. And as you can see, we get an error because we need to fill out a parameter that hasn't been filled in. And in this case, it's the uh, integer called type. So to fix that, we're going to create another integer, uh, another parameter in our power up block class as well. And it's going to be an int type, just like our mushroom. But we're actually going to uh, make a private integer called type in our power up block class because we won't need to access this type integer outside of our power up block class. So it doesn't really matter. So now then we're going to set this dot type equal to type. Oh my god, I can't type properly. Uh, yeah, and uh, we're going to put in our type as the type parameter for our mushroom. Now, I'm going to go into our handler class, over here, and uh, anyway, as you can see, we get errors. Uh, in add entity new mushroom, we can actually delete this line, and uh, we're going to uh, put in 1 for now, because uh, in this episode, we're going to set 1 to be equal to uh, our 1-up mushroom and 0 equal to our regular mushroom. And of course, we got to set the sprite to life mushroom instead of game dot mushroom. We got to set it to game dot life mushroom. And uh, yeah. Anyway, we're gonna go into our mushroom class, and we're gonna make a switch, and the switch will be of gets type. Oh, come on. The switch will be get type, and if case is equal to zero. And then uh, we're just going to copy our g dot draw image line, paste it into here, and of course uh, break the switch. But if case is equal to one, we're gonna uh, do the exact same thing. It's just that game dot mushroom will be game dot life mushroom. So uh, if we run our game, come on. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, to test that uh, launcher thing we did before, we're just going to wait a few seconds. Now we'll start our game. Yeah, there you go. As you can see, our death screen time starts counting now. And uh, I actually need to change the level uh, to just level.png instead of tower boss level.png. So just go into our game class in our init method and just change the tower boss level.png to level.png for our level image. So we'll run our game now. Start the game. Alright, we'll go get our mushroom. 
as you can see, our mushroom is a looks like a one up mushroom, and if we get it, and it makes us big, uh, just like a regular mushroom because we haven't actually uh, coded our game to give our player an extra life when we get a one up mushroom and not make us big. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to go into our player class, uh, go to your entity for loop, and uh, in your if e.getID is equal to id.mushroom is statement, we're going to make a switch inside of that. And the switch will be of e.getType, e referring to the mushroom. And if the case is zero, then we're going to copy uh, all this code because this is the code that we type that makes us big. And uh, yeah, we've got to break it, paste it into our case one, by the way, forgot to say that. And anyway, if case is equal to 1 then we're going to uh, just type if get bounds dot intersects e dot get bounds like we usually do just to check if we're actually colliding with our uh, one up mushroom and if that's true we're going to put in here game dot lives plus plus so it'll increment game dot lives by 1 and uh, we're going to type e dot die to actually destroy our mushroom so uh, everything should be working we'll run our game Alright, we'll start the game. We have five lives. Alright, and we'll actually go get our mushroom. Alright, and uh, we don't go big, and if everything has worked, then we should actually have six lives, and when we die, it should show that we have five lives remaining instead of four. But now we go kill ourselves. Wow. Uh, yeah, I just realized the Goomba actually walks off the edge, so just to make a uh, life easier for ourselves. We're going to go into the input class, open our key input. Oh, it's the, the console. It, it, it's doing it again, like what happened in the last episode. Uh, I tried playing around with it, but uh, I couldn't like get it to fix. Uh, I'll probably reinstall Eclipse just to make that work, because it's getting kind of annoying, just having to drag it from the console to our actual space every time. So, uh, we're going to create another case uh, in our uh, key input class and it's going to be a case key events dot bk q bk q sorry if you can hear a bit of background noise by the way there's some uh, loud background noise going on at the moment so uh yeah if case key event is equal to vk q then uh we're just gonna make our player die so just type en dot die because in this statement in this if statement uh en is referring to our player as you can see here so now we'll run our game. Okay, we'll start the game. Okay, uh, kill our Goomba, we don't need him. We'll get our one up mushroom. Now, if we press Q, then it shows we have five lives instead of four, which means uh, we actually gained a life from getting that one up mushroom. And uh, we can actually keep doing this, uh, get killed by our Goomba. As you can see, we still have five lives. And uh, if we kill ourselves without getting a mushroom, we have four lives like usual. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if someone you know is interested in learning how to program in Java. Please send them this tutorial. I would highly appreciate it. Uh, if you have a Twitter account, feel free to follow me on Twitter. So yeah, anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.